Dear Nia, you died seven months ago in the blaze of a drone bomb when it fell unceremoniously into our living room where you sat working. There was a funeral, it was fancy, the great death of a great scientist, and then they gave me the urn, and I didn't know what to do. Just left it on top of the bookshelf and wished your ashes good morning and wished your ashes good night, kidding myself that if I didn't scatter them, then none of this would have happened. I threw out some of your clothes and slept next to the rest. Your smell is fading from them already, and I think soon enough I won't remember what you smelled like at all. I perform the standard rituals, I feed the cat, I drink liberally, I watch the Higgs fall out on the horizon at night. The war goes on. I've surrendered already. Soren. Dear Soren, it was strange and good and strange to get your message. Though on this side, it was you who died seven months ago in the fire of that drone bomb as it came streaking into not the living room, but the kitchen. At my request, you weren't cremated, but buried. You can imagine what a thing it was today to visit your grave, then come home to find your message waiting for me. But I'm glad you wrote. We are living in those strange first years of a new technology when language can't capture what it is yet. I told a friend about your message. She called it a seance. But a seance is for the dead. And you're not dead. And you are dead. And you're not dead. It's horrible to think all it took that bomb to wander into the kitchen rather than the living room was some tiny perturbation in the air above our house. The war is distant on this side. I haven't seen the Higgs clouds in weeks. And I am not in an urn. Thank you for your message. Nia. Dear Nia, I am trying not to cry at my keyboard. I wasn't even sure you'd reply. Your lab friends have told me that the bridge between us should stay open for a few weeks, but they can't guarantee anything. When I got permission to use the equipment, they warned me not to get my hopes up. That even if I found you, you probably wouldn't be from a world line I recognized. You wouldn't be a Nia I recognized. But I do recognize you. Your words sound like my Nia. I hope that's who you are. Whatever this strange magic you've invented is, it's your legacy now. On this side, they talk about you like you're some great martyr of science. But now I know you're the best kind of martyr. A living one. You are missed. The dog doesn't sleep on our bed anymore, but waits for you at the door. You still get posts sometimes too. I'll scan and attach it with this message. It's just very, very good to hear from you. Soren. Dear Soren, I think maybe you're not clear how this works. You told me the war is still going strong on your side. It's almost over for us. I don't want to make you sad, but that means our world lines are getting distant already. I know you could never stand jargon, but look. The equipment uses a single particle suspended in superposition, just at the moment of wave function collapse. It lives half in your world line, half in mine. It is a fragile bridge between two splitting universes. That's how we're talking. Every time a particle's wave function collapses, it births new world lines, new universes splitting off like coral. And then more particles deviate inside those world lines, more coral branching out, every measurement of the world fracturing the world again and again. New universes born over and over, side by side. This isn't just about your world line and mine. There are quadrillions of them next door. There is a world line where, yes, I stayed for a few more hours at work that night and the bomb never fell on me and we're both still alive. There's a world line where the bomb got both of us. There's a world line where we never met. But how much does your world line and mine differ? Maybe your Nia liked scrambled eggs or could tolerate jazz or hated autumn or whatever. We'll never know, but we are not from the same world. I don't mean to be cold, but please understand this gift for what it is. It's not the beginning of a correspondence, it's a chance to say goodbye. My husband is in that graveyard, your wife is in that urn. Please don't send me her post again. I am not your Nia. The army retook Hypatia today. The war's almost over for us. Thank you for your message, Nia. Dear Nia, well, in this world line, you didn't like scrambled eggs or jazz, so how's that for more evidence you are who I think you are? Yes, things are a little different on this side. Yes, Hypatia is gone for me already. It got Higgs to dust a few weeks ago. But that's world history, not us. I am sitting in our garden writing this. Our garden, staring at our roses. And a world line away, maybe you're sitting here too, at this very moment, right next to me. When you built this thing, this technique, whatever the hell it is, what did you want to use it for? What could be a better application than this? 
a second chance. We're just a universe distant. Don't throw this away, please. It was until death do us part, and you are alive, and I am alive, and don't throw this away. Yours devotedly, Soren. Dear Soren, there aren't any roses in our garden. Not here. You're still not getting it, are you? Even if the only difference between your world line and mine was a gust of wind above our house seven months ago, that difference has changed everything. We have many bridges to many other world lines on this side. We've heard from some that never had the war, and many more that have been higgsed to oblivion, with our village gone, with the cities gone. I've spoken with them, with some of the survivors. I've offered my condolences, and then I've turned off the magnetic field and let the wave function collapse so I can never talk to them again. Because I have nothing to say that would help them. Because they are not us. I am not from that world line where the sky is burst open with the Higgs fallout. I am not from the world line where you lost me. You asked why I built the equipment. Officially, as a screw you to the Copenhagen theorists, unofficially, because I knew there must be at least one world line where a single cell hadn't begun the process of dividing madly out of control inside Mara's body, and we'd never lost her to cancer. I found one of those world lines eventually. She is 11 now. She has your stupid sentimental streak. She has my pragmatism. I spoke to her for an evening, just like you and I are doing now. I told her I missed her, and what did she say? She said, okay, because what can she say? In her world line, she still has parents, still has her life. She said, okay, because I am not her mother. I am not her mother in the same way as I am not your wife. I let her go, and you need to let me go now. I believe one day, when this technology reaches fruition, that humans will develop a new sense, an evolutionary adaptation for seeing ourselves as one among billions of branching versions of our possible selves, for intuiting that we're not individuals, but simultaneous travelers across the atlas of if. You and I don't have that adaptation, and so we're still seeing the world lines as periscopes into parallel worlds, but they're not. They're mirrors. Cracked, distorted fairground mirrors. You are the 586th Soren to contact me. And you are the 586th Soren who I will inform first that I miss him, and second that I am severing the bridge now, because I am severing the bridge now. I can't stop you contacting the other widowed Nears. Maybe there's a softer, kinder me out there who will keep this game up with you, who will send letters to a ghost. I wish you luck finding her. I wish you luck with the war. I wish you luck moving on. Take comfort in knowing that beside our grey half-lives, a world line away, who knows what became of a single subatomic deviation. Great palaces in the sky, continents without starvation or deprivation, and somewhere across the coral, you and I are still swimming together. Yours probabilistically, Nia. Dear Nia, that's very poetic, but I think you're just hurting like I am. Grieving is horrible, I know it, but please don't do anything rash with the connection. I'll be sitting by my inbox all day, just right back as soon as you- Dear Nia, it's been a week of nothing from you now. I know you're upset, I'm sure it must all be strange, but things are getting horrible here, and I wish you'd write. You were always stubborn, but I could always win you around, and I hope it's one of those times. Dear now. Nia, they've started higgsing everything now, and I don't think it's long before the radiation reaches us. Please just tell me how you are. Please tell me you're okay. Please tell me something. For the sake of even an iota of decency, will you please just write back? Hell, you built all of this. You can't just take it. Nia, a month. A month of nothing. You're right. Maybe there are differences in the world lines. My Nia was never this stubborn or myopic. Would never have trodden heartlessly on the hearts of those around her. Are you going to leave me trapped here? Trapped with this urn and the blue hell dust on the horizon and the bodies in the streets and the noise and the hangover mornings and the stumbling nights. My god, it meant nothing, did it? Not a damn thing. Not you and I, not civility, not peace agreements, not civilization. All of it just some stupid veneer to cover up how dumb we still all are. Fine, leave me here then with your dust. Dear Madam, it is with great pleasure that we award you the title of Doctor of Philosophy, specifically in the field of the foundations of quantum mechanics. I would like to personally apologize for our delaying of awarding your doctorate, but as I'm sure you understand, your research was somewhat unorthodox. 
particularly the correspondences you submitted between your counterpart and the counterpart of your husband from the so-called parallel world lines. I have since used your technique to speak to my counterparts from several world lines and can report the experience is a strange one, though will no doubt become a common practice for us all soon enough. I can also recommend several therapists I have subsequently required the services of. Now that these so-called world lines have been confirmed, I would also like to seek your approval of my forwarding your thesis to the Ministry of Defense, in light of the global conflict our world line has apparently narrowly avoided. In any case, congratulations. I look forward to receiving you and your fellow colleagues at the doctoral award ceremony at the end of this month. I have taken the liberty of reserving seats there for your husband and daughter, who given their, in some sense, featuring in your research, I confess an interest in meeting in person. Your ceremonial gown and bonnet can be rented via companies I have provided the details of below. Free parking for the ceremony can be found in the designated blue areas. If you have any special dietary requirements regarding the celebratory lunch, please let the university know.